I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about not ready for a relationship. Now, we hear this a lot. All the time. Sometimes mm -hmm. people say it because they're looking for an excuse to get out of a relationship. Sometimes people are dealing with emotional issues or family issues. Mm -hmm mental health issues and they genuinely mean it. And they genuinely mean it, yeah. It can be really difficult to tell the difference. Yes. Right. Um, and we have a really good email that is going to look closely at somebody's situation. Margaret, what do you think about the not ready for a relationship uh, reason or excuse? Do you see that a lot in your coaching? I'm seeing it daily. Uh, every every day that I talk with folks, I hear that one. And <clears throat> there are a number of different things it can mean. I mean, we, at one point we talked about I'm not ready for a relationship, meaning somebody else has already caught our eye. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, that's very yes, true. Yes, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That can be true. Um, on the other hand, um, what good is it going to do us to, to pry to see if that's the real reason or not? You're really kind of left taking it at face value if that's what somebody tells you. Yeah, but it's very difficult it's to let it go. It's very difficult to let it go. <laughs> and it makes you angry when it's not true. You can sort of feel it. Yeah. Um, so, well, that's very nice. Okay, I respect that. Now tell me the real reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I hear it a lot too, sure. certainly every day. Um, in some, some shape or form. Right. But that's what Margaret and I kind of do when we're looking at your situation. Is we're going to assess, is it real or is it BS? Right. So we're going to look at somebody who says that today in their relationship. This is a couple that is in their early 30s and they were dating for about three months. Okay. So we're looking at, are they really not ready for a relationship? Is something going on there? Or are they using it as an excuse? Okay. So, they started off by saying that the two biggest uh, problems in the relationship were zero hope. <laughs> she said, I will try to sum this up, but I have a crazy story. I am coming out of a nine-year engaged situation. We broke up this past June. I met this new guy out with friends in October. She doesn't say any more about the nine years no. of her engagement. No, she doesn't. And the connection was unreal. I could not let it go. Too soon, I know. We hit it off on all levels. He even asked me to go on a trip out of the country with him after dating a month and a half, and I agreed. I was on cloud nine until he said he might move for a job two hours away to be closer to his dying dad. Okay. Well, Sounds pretty legitimate, right? When, when you first hear it. When you first hear it. You know, I mean, if somebody says to me, I have to move because one of my parents is going to die, they're terminally ill, I'm going to be like, oh, that's terrible. Yes. You know, I mean, what's going on? And sure. you really want to know. I mean... But you're going to, of course, feel awful because you're all excited and elated about this new relationship. And what can you say? Nothing other than, I'm so sorry, and yes, I understand. Yeah, exactly. But it is pretty dramatic. Yes. She goes on to say, I was devastated and think it brought me back to my previous loss and feeling of abandonment. After a nine-year engagement, yes. Sure, yeah. I believe I'm anxious and he is avoidant. When he went to visit his dad, he would never call me, only text. I was never introduced to him either. My friends think that this is very suspicious that communication drops off when he goes there. Well, I would wonder too, would you? Absolutely. Yeah. 
okay? Uh, this is somebody, I, like I said, I did an email coaching with, and I said, it sounds very suspicious to me, and already I'm thinking, is there another woman? Right, me so, too. Now I'm going to assess and I'm going to look closer. Because he stays wherever this is for like the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because it seems awful suspicious that you can't pick up the phone for a minute. Right. Just two minutes, a conversation, when your dad's in the bathroom or taking a shower or taking a nap, something. Right. I don't like it. So all, all, already and automatically the bells are ringing for me. Yeah. You also don't get any information about who's taking care of Dad or if he has the full care of him that weekend. or You just have no idea. All right, so let's go on. I asked him if he could call from there, to which he said he could not. That sounds like BS to me, Margaret. Yeah, me too. We still went on the trip where we got into a couple of arguments, mostly him bragging to another couple about the new job because he got paid more and thought it would be closer to dad and how I would have to deal with a weekend boyfriend. Things took a turn from there and we kept fighting. Well, she was obviously not happy with that. Yeah. He travels a lot for work, found condoms in his travel bags and backpack he brings to visit his dad and he said they've always been in there. That makes it okay? Okay, at this point... Since long before <laughs> I met you. At this point, Margaret, now we've gone from red flags yeah. to DEFCON yeah, right? Right. Yeah. level. Yeah. Because, it, I'm going to read this again, because think about how clo what she says here. Found condoms in his travel bags and backpack. backpack. So that makes it sound like there's at least three different bags oh that could well be i didn't think of that Exa you're a better detective than <laughs> right? i yes travel bags yeah and yeah. backpack so it's at least two at least two right. different places right possibly three or possibly more possibly three right so now i'm really thinking oh no 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 but they've no, no. always been there yeah since long before i met you i think is the other okay. half of the sentence so now i'm really gonna have a problem with somebody doing this to me Right? Right. She says, I got really accusatory after that. Funny thing. I could totally understand why. He did not end up taking the new job, but said he would be traveling more often to see Dad anyways, and I better get used to it. Whoa. Not how is this going to be for you? No. And There's not... There's a big difference. Yes. Not very empathetic at all. Not at all. Okay, so she said that there were two main problems, that we kept arguing all the time about small things, she said not small really, and that I was too needy and clingy and needed too much communication. Like where the heck he was. And who he was with. Yeah. Which is, I think, really the essence of all these issues. Yes. She was upset because she saw the condoms, he wasn't contacting her, he says he can't even make a phone call. I mean, if he's with another woman, it would be easy or easier to text her. Yep. But he certainly can't pick up a phone. No, he certainly can't. And yeah, she's probably looking at him too. Mm-hmm. He said that we argued too much about little things, that he could not give me the level of commitment or, com I'm sorry, communication that I needed. And that's probably true. It's probably absolutely true. Now, do they live together at this point? No, they were only, remember, they were only dating three months. Right. Um... That I was so where was she? I wonder that she was going through his bags. Anyway. I'm sure she, when she had a minute, she was looking through it. Because once, once he's telling her, I can't pick up the phone for you know, a quick call, that's when she started investigating. Sure. And she was not happy with what she no. found. Okay. That I was too clingy and needy, and he was not sure if he was ready for a relationship. So... Not one, he said. I'm not ready for one relationship. Yeah, he he's not ready to be exclusive with her. Now, yeah. that's what I think he means here. I mean, because who knows what's going on with these other women or another woman. If there is one, I mean, it certainly appears that there are yeah. other women. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't want to be in a committed relationship, 
then he should just tell her that. That's fine. Say that. Right. But that's not what he's doing. He's saying, I can't communicate with you as much as you need. Not, I can't commit to you as much as I need. And you ask too many questions, is my translation. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's, she's trying to figure out if he's up yeah. to no good, which I think he is. I mean, you have evidence um, that it looks that way. Mm -hmm. He said he no longer had any emotional connection to me after all the fighting and that he has already moved on just two weeks later. That's pretty quick after this wonderful initial connection. Mm -hmm. Seems to me like there is no doubt that there's other women in the picture here. And that's why it was so easy for him to move on. Right. And that's why he didn't have an emotional connection. Now he leaves her feeling like this is all her fault. Right. And that's what because I have a problem with. Because she's too clingy. Yeah, he didn't do anything wrong at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, she said when it came to the breakup, she handled it awfully. I begged, pleaded, tried to rationalize. We met up at least three times after the breakup where I slept over. We had brunch, even sex. I thought I could turn this around. I just hounded him to get back together. I even told him I love him for the first time, to which he just yelled at me. I felt awful. I can imagine. That's brutal. Oh, yeah. She, so she feels like things are out of control, and it seems to me like she's trying to say, oh, I love you, in an attempt to get him to yeah. connect with her, and then he just yelled at her. And he, he doesn't have any compassion he for He just this wanted woman. out by that time. Yeah. He was pulling away, answering me less, and I over-pursued, and the last night I saw him, I forced myself to stay over, and he was pissed. So she's like forcing himself on her on this guy. Yeah. He said that he did not want to touch me, kiss me, make plans with me. He had no emotional connection whatsoever, and we should not even have sex anymore. And you're blaming yourself. Now, of course, the behavior that you did was unattractive here, but... It was in response to him being shady, um, hiding things from you, and disconnected from you, refusing to communicate to, with you. So, I don't think this is your fault at all. And saying your only option is to be a weekend girlfriend. And you better get used to it. Not how is this going to be for you, you better get used to it. Yeah. yeah. Then... He told me to shut up when we were going to bed. He was probably tired yep. and frustrated and he didn't want to even deal with you anymore right. or the situation. He right. was just over it. I called him the next morning and said I might lose or he, I called him the next morning and said I might lose my job over this and asked if I would see him that week. He said yes. I followed up with texts asking if I would see him which he answered two days later saying, I don't think I'll be able to see you this week. I lost it. Called him five times, texted a bunch, no reply. He has not answered me since, and this was been, has been since the middle of February. I tried calling him the, week, the following week, sent two, two set texts saying I was sorry that I spazzed out, hoped he was okay, and that it hurt to be ignored. No reply. We are going on three months now. Nothing. Early April, I stupidly broke no contact and texted him saying I was at the store and something reminded me of you. No reply. What can I do now to try to get him to stop ignoring me? Is there no hope here? Please tell me. Okay. Well, you can't make somebody stop ignoring you. No, you can't. And okay. we hear that one fairly often. There's nothing you can do no. to make somebody stop ignoring you. And maybe you could post a picture on Instagram, I just won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> that would be about it, though. Just won $100 million in the lottery, then they'll stop ignoring you. <laughs> yeah. That's about it, though. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then at that point, you don't want them anyway, right? Uh, but seriously, you, you know, you're in a situation like this. You're saying, is there any hope here? And I think that, you know, you don't want this man. 
It doesn't seem like that's clear to her quite yet. No. Um, but, you know, you're blaming yourself, but this man did nothing to validate how you were feeling no, and had any compassion or empathy that he could say, you know what, if I saw condoms in your purse and you were going away for the weekend, that would bother me too. I'm. Let's talk about this. He you need validate me. her feelings. You're absolutely right. Yeah. He couldn't um, provide any empathy or understanding and say, you know what, let me, I'll FaceTime you at my dad's house. Um, and if you call me and I don't pick up, I'll try and get back with you if I'm dealing with something. Right. But instead, what does he do? Nope, can't be bothered. I can't call you right. while I'm at my dad's house. Right. I don't trust this guy at all. Me either. At all. Nope. He, everything that he's doing indicates, I don't want you to know where I'm at. I don't know what want you to know what I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you where I'm at and what I'm doing. And you better get used to it. And I don't care if you like it. You better get used to it. Yeah, you're only going to see me on on weekends. Now, you did some math with the number of bags here. Yes. We have a travel it, bag. It said travel bags and backpack. So that means there are at least two different places, at least one travel bag and at least one backpack. Probably more than one travel bag. But even if it's two places, it's still very suspicious. Yeah. Okay? Even one place would leave you thinking, okay, come on. Have they really been in there for a while? But because they're in all these different places. And why do you need that if you're going to take care of your dying father? Well, I guess you just never know when someone will come by. Right? Right? Some of those in-home nurses are very cute. Then you Google the dad's name and you find out if he passed away three years <laughs> <Yeah>. ago. <laughs> and he's made the whole thing up. Terrible. Um, you know, him telling you that he's not ready for a relationship... Yeah, he, we know he's not ready for a relationship with you. Or maybe he's not ready for a real commitment with anybody. Yeah, that could be. But, you know... He, and, of course, it, make, it makes me wonder what happened to her before, after a nine-year engagement. Yeah. So she must have been very hurt. And this, like she said, is a rerun for her, probably. And It's only, like, three three months later yeah. that she started dating and him. And she's probably wondering what's wrong with her. Yeah. Yeah. She and, needs to see somebody. Yeah. I think so. Um... If you happen to see this video, I'd do a coaching with Margaret on this one and let her explore what, that nine-year relationship and what happened there yeah. and how you might be traumatized. Yes. Because um, I'm willing to bet that there are some family issues for you that you would even be remotely attracted to this, this guy. This guy, right, who's not treating you well. Because yeah. I think somebody that was healthier would have said, I got to get out. This guy's terrible. But I hear no anger here, do you? No, I hear desperation. And what, what it sounds like to me is that at some point in your life you got used to ignoring red flags, maybe for survival. Mm -hmm. So that can happen in people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think that you should, even if this guy comes back, I don't think you should give him another chance. No. If you do, you need to make sure that he's honest and he's transparent and that he's sincere and he's understanding. And he works to get you back. But I don't think this guy's going to do it. I don't either. No. I no. Don't, yeah, we hate to give you the brutal truth, but... I don't think he's capable yeah, of doing no, it. No. Because, I mean, let's just say that if he was capable of doing it, he would have been more compassionate with her from the get-go. He would have, instead of hiding things and being, uh, you know, like, oh, you got to get used to it. And, and yeah. he would have said, let's talk about this. Let's deal with this. I could see why you're so upset. But he didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. Not based on what she wrote here. No. Nor did she know anything about the situation of his dad and what the poor guy might have. Or because he, she never met him. Who was taking care of him the rest of the time and all that sort of thing. Yeah, so, as far yeah. as we know. Yeah. We, it wasn't in, yeah. in the email. So, um, I honestly hope that you just find someone better for right. you and figure out that you yeah. deserve a lot better than this. And beware of instant connections. Please be careful. They feel wonderful, like a miracle, like the best thing in the world, but they can lead you down a path you don't want to go. Yep. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can just go to my website, AskCraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Feel free to sign up with me. I can get you in pretty quickly right now. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. 
Remember to subscribe to the channel, and we are podcasted now on all the major podcast platforms like iTunes and Spotify and all the different ones that are out there. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.